Welcome to the Marco Island Center for the Arts and the Advancing Art Program. Advancing Art Program has been designed to help high school and emerging artists learn about the business of being an artist. In this program, we have engaged professional working artists to share their expertise and their insights with you. Marco Island Center for the Arts wants to thank the Island Country Club Charitable Foundation for underwriting this program. Enjoy. Good morning. I'm Joanne Sanborn, an artist here on Marco Island, and I've been asked to come and talk with you about art marketing and social media. So what is art marketing? It's a process, a process of advertising, promotion, social media, backstories, direct email, word of mouth, and any method that creates awareness and interest for you and your work. The result should equal sales for the artist. So now there's a process for art making art sales. Let me tell you what collectors need because they're the ones buying your art. First, they need exposure to it. They can't buy what they don't see. So they have to see your art to want it. When they see it, they have to want to look a little closer. So that's interest. They need interest. Then they have to like what they see. If they look at your work and it's interesting, but they don't like it, it's probably not going to be a sale. So they have to like what they see, and then they have to have the desire to want it for themselves. Um, now, this desire includes time. Sometimes it takes time for someone to decide what they want and if it's the one for them, and it takes uh, the right price. It has to be within their budget or the value that they perceive for that painting. Um, and many art sales require repeated exposure because that leads to a comfort level that makes purchases more likely to buy. So, if you are an artist with gallery representation, the gallery calls the short shots. You have to conform to the gallery's way, but then you can leave the sales to them. This is great for shy artists with a great body of work, for those who don't want to do anything but paint. Once accepted into a gallery, they do the sales and you only have to show up now and then when they have an opening for you. It may be easier to get accepted if you have a strong following, and that's something we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, but when you're a self-representing artist, you call the shots. You still have to paint every day, but you will have other responsibilities like marketing and bookkeeping. Um, you make the business decisions and control the finances, and for some of, our, some of us, that suits us just fine. Um, you may have to come out of your comfort zone now and then as you find ways to meet people and to build your audience. Remember that you must expose people to your art for them to want to purchase. So how can we do this? One of the um, tried and traditional ways is outdoor art shows or indoor art shows where you bring your art and you actually get to talk to the people who might be interested in purchasing. Um, you can find places to send your art, with, which will send you a commission. People like art centers, museums, stores, artist cooperatives, places like that. You can learn to sell online, particularly if you enjoy the technical ways of the web, which um, are a struggle for some of us who are a little bit older. And you can open your own gallery or public studio and have the public come to you. And if you decide to do this, a place with a lot of traffic is ideal, not tucked away in a corner. You need to have people see your art, be exposed to your art. So today we'll talk mostly about the marketing needs of self-representing professional artists. That's what I am, so that's what I know the most about. Um, and I got started doing outdoor art shows um, where I learned sales and marketing to survive. So the first thing you need is to choose a business name. And you can use your own, which will become readily recognizable. You can add fine art or art to it, or studio, Joanne Sanborn Studio, Joanne Sanborn Fine Art. I often use Joanne Sanborn Everglades Artist. 
Once you have a name, you can get a get business cards somewhere like Vistaprint or Moo.com, Vistaprint or Moo.com. And um, when you do that, it makes you look professional. When you can say, I'm an artist, and hand somebody a card with a picture of your art on it, it adds to the professionalism, which adds to the acceptance and comfort level of the buyer. If you, um, we're going to talk about getting a website. So before you pick that name, you might want to see if it's available as a .com. Because it may be available as a .net, but most people are used to .com, and it's much easier for them to find you if your name is a .com. Um, choose a byline, something to introduce yourself quickly and thoroughly. Something like, um, I'm Kira Smith, and I paint dog portraits. Or, I'm John Jones, and I can paint uh, charming portraits of your children. Something that will just roll off your tongue, and you can say it when you shake someone's hand very easily. And I, mine, after much trial and error, I say, I'm Joanne Sanborn, I paint the other things. Um, so learn how to talk about your art beyond that first sentence. Maybe you have a backstory that you can apply. Maybe you love dogs and you paint dogs, and you can talk about um, the dog, you know, the dog in your life, as well as what you can do for for people's pet portraits. Maybe you've had cancer. Maybe you love nature. Um, but look for others with similar interests because they will be. When you expose them to your art, they'll be more readily acceptable because they have that connection and identity with you. And or maybe you want to find a charity that you can identify with, and you can find ways to support them that are mutually supportive. You can sell something in your shop and uh, donate to their gala and get exposure of your art that way. And always be ready um, once you're out there, when someone asks you with an artist statement or a bio. I, I revise mine the first of every year and then they're ready. If someone from the press calls or I'm entering a show that wants a statement, it's all ready. So keep those things at the ready an artist statement and a, a, a small bio. And they can be fun. You don't have to be too serious in the bio. It doesn't have to list everything you've ever done. You want it to give people a sense of who you are and whether they can work with you. Um, start keeping a list of everything that happens to you. If you get an award, if you get media recognition, if you get into a special show. It's very hard at first to build those credentials, but build slowly. slowly. And keep everything so that you'll have it when you need it. What have you done? You've done something. And you can tell people about it. Um, building a brand. Now, I've chosen to build a brand Everglades Artist. And it can be limiting. People are very surprised when I do something else. But it also can be rewarding because people who love nature and love the Everglades know where to come from just the right painting for them. So over time, your brand will tell your story. And remember that if you don't tell your own story, others will, and it may not be the story you want. So learn to tell it yourself. Now, online, one of the most important things to have is a website. It, I know it's expensive, and I know for a new artist it may be a little hard, but it's still the most respectable form of exposure. It gives collectors a comfort zone. They know you'll be there. You have a place on the web. And um, they can look you up and they can see who you are. And that gives them a level of comfort if they're thinking of purchasing from you. It's basically static. A website is static. It's your, um, but it's there and it's stable from you. And it becomes your home your, uh, on the internet. It's your real estate. And because it's yours, you have the power to control it. You have the power over the space. Um, I suggest setting one up that's very easy for you to run and to change, make changes. You can sell from it very easily directly these days. So you can set up to monetize, and it's a wonderful thing to get an email that says you've just sold a painter. Um, you can utilize the rest of the web to drive traffic to this website. And if you monetize it, then it's, it's there and ready for people who get the sudden urge from a painting at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and you want to update it frequently with new work, and you want to update it 
uh, yielding with new ideas. You may want to change the color or the format of it. Um, I had to design a website twice, and it was very, very hard to get things done. I would tell the um, webmaster what I wanted, and sometimes it wasn't done to my liking. I would request certain colors, and they would be off, and it was expensive if I wanted to make changes. So I needed a website that I could manage, and I could change what I wanted. But I also knew I needed technical support. I'm not a webmaster. So I finally found a web provider that I really love, and I'm going to pass that name on to you. It is Fine Art Studios Online, or the acronym is FASO, F-A-S-O. This has been my choice for many years, and that of many successful painters. And I have yet to find something better. I think they're mockers. Um, I can choose a template for my, for my website out of many, I can choose the color strategy I want, and if I don't like one they have, it's very easy for me to make it uniquely mine. I choose the pages I want to include, and I can personalize with them when I need to. And if I need something special or want something I don't know how to do, they have excellent, excellent technical support. So I love them. But in addition, the owner's goal is to help art marketers. But he wants to make the artists who go with Basso successful. So they have a huge body of marketing knowledge um, through videos that you can use. They have marketing seminars and they have um, a web, page, web pages on marketing. So they have all the, um, if you want to educate yourself about working online, they have the information for you. And they have both monthly and annual plans, which makes them very affordable. But please go out and browse for yourself. Um, Squarespace is upcoming in the web marketing for artists world, and there are other online website builders. Look for ones that artists are doing well. Some are harder to use, some are very intuitive, and, and I found FASO the best for me. So once you get a website, which you found already that your name.com can do that, and they can also help you um, get that domain name and keep it up to date. So then you need a home page, which should certainly be a picture of your art, a little verbiage to let people know what they're going to find inside your website, and also to tell Google what's inside so that when your website is crawled by Google, um, the information of exactly what's in there will be available to them. You need portfolios of your work, and I found that people seem to like Categories, looking at categories of work. I've mentioned dogs, if you do dogs, and a dog cage, a page, and a cat page. I have seascapes and landscapes, and then I have small things that are a little bit different, but they seem to like to look at similar work together. So um, think of that when you're building your portfolios. An about page, something about you. And again, you can make it fun, you can make it light, or you can make it very deep and make people cry but something that gives people a feeling of who you are, who the artist is, and if they respond to that, they're more likely to purchase from you because they feel a connection to you. Uh, contact page is very important, how people can reach you. Um, I have on mine a, a, a place where you can uh, put in your email, but I also have my phone and my business email there because I want people to be able to reach me when they want to not to have to wait um, to get an answer. So um, once you have a website and a business card, you are on your way to getting ready for social media. But another thing you need is some way for people to pay for your work. So you need a, a, an account that allows you to pay people, people to pay you and for you to pay them if, they, if you need to. Um, and, certainly you want to begin taking a credit card. And how you do that today is very easy with things like PayPal and Square. People can use these to, you can use it on your website, you can monetize your website very easily once you have a PayPal account. If you are on FASO, it's almost automatic, it's a very easy process. And then people can use their credit card to um, buy your work. And when I go out, out of my home where I may not have the web available, I take my iPad and my square, 
and it's a little device I just plug into the iPad and I think again take credit cards and it goes directly to my bank account. Um, upcoming ways are Apple Pay, more and more people using that, and even Venmo. And some artists will use all of these because they believe they want to make whatever the person's comfortable with the way to purchase. And um, they all do take a percentage, but it's a cost of doing business. And going cheap and not taking it can really cost you. My sales doubled when I began taking credit cards. So you, there are some other places to sell art rather than off your website. Etsy may be one. You can post there. You can build an audience through their auctions. Um, at Daily Paintworks, you can pay monthly and they have auction and small work and make good sales, they have a very large customer base there. Um, and you, uh, in these cases, you still have to ship the work and from your website, you have the work in your possession and you ship it. If you don't want to bother with shipping, you can go to places like Fine Out America, where you put up your images and they're sold the way people want to get them. They may be on a shower curtain, they may be as a framed painting, but in Fine Art America, they ship for you, so the percent you get back is smaller. Um, so let's talk about social media itself. And while it can be a great showplace for your art, the algorithms change without warning. And you can't control who sees your work on any one day or why. So give it a whirl, but be aware that it's out of your control, and that's why it's so necessary at that backup of that good, solid website. You can um, feed work through social media there. So, grow, so think of social media as your garden. And growing it takes time and effort. You need to plant the seeds. You need to get exposure. You need to draw in people who like you and like your work and find your work appealing. And as people know and become familiar and love your work, you'll begin to make sales. Uh, my advice is to choose one or two social media platforms and build an audience there. And for a couple of years, I really liked Instagram. It's been great. It has great visual appeal. It's good for artists. It has a few drawbacks. They'll only allow you to have one link, um, it, one link, and it's in your the description of you. Um, but you, now people are beginning to use LinkedIn there, so you can use Linktree, I'm sorry, Linktree.com, and you can use that so it can go to the painting or uh, any of your other pages or places where you sell your art. Um, and I, I do, I post on Instagram daily, but they're just, in the past couple of weeks, have changed their algorithm to where they're going to be favoring videos. So, um, I don't know if they're giving TikTok a run for its money or what, but they uh, have found that people love looking at videos of people painting, and so they're going to feature more videos and less still shots. So that algorithm is something we can do nothing about, so I highly recommend videos. Um, Pinterest is great. It's a good way to show your art. It gets a lot of attention, and it will get you some attention from strangers. So that's a good place to have a presence. And what, what you paste can lead, again, back to your website, back to the work, and back with a way to purchase. Um, on Facebook, you can have a personal page or a business page. And you can have both. And most artists have found that the business page adds a distraction without result. They basically want you to boost your posts and make ads, and the result of those is not necessarily um, productive. So. I post almost exclusively on my um, personal page. And with LinkedIn, I, I found that that's more professional contacts than sales. So if you're trying to get into a gallery, maybe LinkedIn would be a good place for you. But if you're trying to get exposure and sell out yourself, maybe not so much. So it's, um, and Twitter is not, just not as visual. It's trying to get more visual, but most people don't go there to see art. They go to Twitter for different reasons. So try a couple of these out, try two or three of them out, and see how they work for you. After a couple of months, you'll know which is fertile soil for your particular garden, and put your efforts there. And don't feel bad about where you can't go. You can only spend so much on this. I recommend no more than 15 minutes a day. And um, 
So go where you are getting the results. So let's talk about what to post. And again, this is constantly changing. But anything that will get someone's attention is a good thing to post. I post a painting on Instagram every week they want, and which automatically links to my Facebook page. And um, if you ask questions, it gives people a chance to respond. Your your um, the more uh, interaction you get with the people on the web, the better you, rating you'll get, and the more you po your posts will be seen. Things like art tips are always welcome. You can post to stories and post there several times a day if you really want to be out there. Um, but you should post at least five to ten times a week on the, on the couple that you've chosen. Um, comment and like at least 15 others in your 15 minutes. And when you leave comments, make sure they're sincere and encouraged. You never want to offer unsolicited advice ever. Um, and always contribute more than you take, and meet your obligation to respond to those who comment on your feed. People will say, lovely painting, what a beautiful morning, whatever they say, respond to them. And it will slowly help you build your audience, and you will find your tribe in your peace. So, your post should always be kept in the realm of art. One of your paintings, a picture of you at the easel, Perhaps you're in an art store looking at paint, your car loaded with canvases, um, you washing the brushes, you testing a brush, um, anything related to what you do. Maybe you use a palette knife, um, anything that shows you at work or, or the results of that work. Um, you can share a great book, um, and better still, these days, a video. So um, don't post about family. Never post about politics or causes unless your art is directly related to it. And um, don't worry if mostly artists follow you at first. A high percentage of artists buy art, and I'm one of them. Um, so video is becoming big, really big. And 87% of professional marketer, marketers use video as a tool, and they say it's great. They're satisfied with that. So. Um, Learn to make small videos and utilize them to draw attention to your art. It can be showing you mix a color, showing you investigating a color, showing you painting a tree and painting that's mostly done. Whatever you like, a little bit, and you can do this easily with your iPhone. Um, get an iPhone holder and go for it. And don't be afraid of it. Don't worry about how you look. Just, just do it because it's the way of the future. Um, if you want an app to help you look more professional, you want to put music to your videos, you might look at something like Quick App or Splice. Quick App or Splice. And if you don't mind paying $2.99 in shock, it's a little more complicated, but um, artists seem to like it. And I've used Adobe as well. Um, but the, the goal is to keep, in, keep your art in front of people, keeping them looking at your art, knowing who did it, and um, and enjoying it. So once you get this foundation on the web and your website, you may want to consider starting a newsletter. Some artists do this and some don't. Um, but most established artists agree that a newsletter is a really good way to build a strong collective base and to build a base that is um, engaged. You can start with a mailing list of your family and friends, who are people who want to support you and who want to see you succeed. Those are the people to start your mailing list with. Um, anyone who's purchased your art ever, always get their stay in touch information. Usually email is the easiest way to do that. Um, it's much easier to sell to someone who already knows and likes your work. So, a collector is a person who's purchased from you is a valuable asset. Um, co-workers may be interested, your Facebook friends may be interested, your Snapchat friends, people who like your posts on Instagram. Some artists are writing to those people and saying, you've, you've liked my work for 10 times now, would you like to get my newsletter? And um, But you must ask them before adding them to, to before emailing them regularly. That's the law. 
So you can uh, compose a personal email to these people or a text and say, I'd like to add you to my newsletter. Are you willing? And if you get a yes, that's when you add them. Um, I found successful for me a once a, once a month newsletter. People seem to enjoy it. It's longer than is recommended, but um, I'm told again and again that people have enjoyed it. And people respond to it. I usually get a note back from many of my people saying, thank you, I enjoyed your newsletter, or I'd like to buy the painting that's um, on there today. So, so it pays for me to have a newsletter, and I think it will for you too. Now, people receive a lot of email marketing, and people are getting really sick of it. So you want to name your newsletter, give it a name that people will recognize and see, so they'll be excited when you get it, and we'll just trash it. Add a photo of your newest work. Um, some ideas are to talk about the inspiration for it, the colors in it. If it's for sale, it will. if I make a newsletter in FASO, it will automatically, if someone clicks on it, link to the sales page for that painting, and I think that's a real asset. Um, I always show a painting that sold last month. People don't want to be buying from someone who nobody buys from. They're comfortable if they know you're regularly selling. So um, I usually show something that sold that month. I talk about classes, exhibitions that are upcoming. I also ask them to forward the, my email to someone else who might be interested. And, I, and I'm finding that I'm getting um, added uh, people that way. And I always, always thank them for supporting me in my work. So basically, I, I write in a very homey manner. I want to make them feel good at, about knowing what I'm doing and supporting it. And I want to, I want to feel, I want them to feel like they're my friend because they are. They're my friends. And when and if they write back, just like online, always answer them. Acknowledge that you heard. When someone takes the time to write back to you, they deserve that acknowledgement that you heard. Um, and always offer an unsubscribe link at the bottom. And most email systems have this automatically because times change, people's change, their interests change, um, and it's far better not to bother people, but to have ones who really want to hear from you. Getting it. Um, so as you grow as an artist, uh, keep your time reward ratio in mind. If you're spending two hours a day on Instagram and you haven't got one sale or response, it's not worth your time. That's not your audience. Find your audience and make sure that it's it's working for you. Let's see. So I made a list of. Um, some habits, daily, weekly, and monthly, that you might find helpful. It's a little checklist, and I try to use it. So a daily, I try to spend no more than 15 minutes a day on social media. I post something to Instagram, Facebook, and I respond to people who comment. Um, I keep a list of things that I can add to my newsletter, to, and I mark any sales with inventory. The rest of the time, daily, I'm painting. Weekly, I take a morning to um, photograph any new paintings, send handwritten thank you notes to purchasers, update my collected database, and I just keep a, a envelope on my desk if I get somebody's card or their name that I've written on a little piece of paper. I stick it in there and then once a once a month put add them to my newsletter before I send out my monthly newsletter. I update the records of my work. I add new paintings. I purchaser information to my Excel basis, um, and I share something good on Instagram at least three times a week. So monthly, I revise my inventory list. I want to know what sold and what didn't. I keep the old ones in the file so I can always go back and check if I've forgotten something or made an error. Um, I add receipts for supplies and other expenses to Quicken, which is how I do my finances. You may use QuickBooks or you just may use a ledger. But if you add those things monthly, it's very quick and easy to do. If you wait till the end of the, end of the year, it can be a mess. Um, and then once I've recorded the uh, receipts, I put them in a large envelope and um, date it with the year, and I don't have to look at them again. Monthly, I order new supplies. And here in Florida, we have sales tax, so I do that once a month. 
and then I complete and send my newsletter. And for me, the best day is the first Friday of the month. So I've given you a lot to think about and um, a few things to do. And I hope as a new uh, emerging artist, you'll do some of these things and get a presence online and get people buying your work as, as uh, quickly as you can. Thank you so much for spending your time with me this morning.